today, the AMD RX 7600 is launching and I've got the Sapphire Pulse. We're gonna do a Linux box upgrade, because why not? We've got a, a relatively cheeky, scrappy little system here. It's an AM5 system with 64 gigabytes of memory, rocking on our MSI Mortar B650 Wi-Fi. Yeah, I've got the Fractal all-in-one cooler. I've got it in a little defined mini case for micro ATX motherboards. This system will do about anything you want. And this GPU isn't overly huge or loud and it doesn't get hot. This is a, a much better design in terms of cooling than the reference design of the RX 7600, which I also had and reviewed on the main level one text channel. But this is, this is Linux where we can all just sort of have a little fun and get to know one another. Now I've temporarily installed a Samsung 980 Pro in here so I can sort of walk through the installation for this GPU, but I actually recommend a Solidine P44 Pro. It's cheaper and faster than the Samsung 980 Pro. Samsung in trouble. So getting this thing set up for Linux, you plug it in. That's basically it. Even though this GPU is launching today, it's RDNA 3. And RDNA 3 has been out for a while already. And the support for this has already been baked into the Linux kernel. So if you're running a relatively recent distro, we're gonna be using Pop! OS, because Pop! OS rocks. It's just going to work. Now the suggested end user pricing on this is $269, $270, less than $300. NVIDIA's kind of checked out here. They're looking around and they're saying, well, but we basically have a license to print money when it comes to AI and machine learning. They have not had well-priced goods for gaming in a while, or at least if you want to consider the AMD parts competitive, it depends on technologies like DLSS3. Linux users have always kind of been a second-class citizen with NVIDIA. I mean, they kind of have Linux support, but the binary blobs and then software support, and they are doing better in recent years, but they've got to continue to do even more better. Meanwhile, AMD is sort of the star of the show here when it comes to AMD support. Now, a scrappy little up-and-comer is Intel, and AMD is facing a lot of competition from Intel at the lower end of the market, which is where the RX 7600 is. I mean, it's a less than $300 gaming GPU that'll do about anything you want to do if you game at 1080p and about anything you want to do at 1440p as long as you don't need more than 60 FPS sustained, or it'll do about 60 FPS, give or take. Now when you're doing performance testing on Linux, you gotta remember sometimes things are weird. Deus Ex Mankind Divided, for example, okay, it's an older title, but it illustrates my point perfectly. There is a native Linux version. The Proton version, which means that there's Windows shenanigans going on in the background, actually works a lot better than the native Linux version because no one's really done anything interesting with the native Linux version, it seems, for the last couple of years. Other games like Doom Eternal, well, except for the, the DRM kerfuffle, there was that, but then you can run the pirated version. Oh, I didn't say that out loud. Uh, performance on Linux is pretty good. It's a 1080p card. You can do 70 to 90 FPS, it really depends on the title. Um, under Linux at 1080p. 1440p is a little bit more doable, just depends on the game. For games that have really good native Linux support, the performance parity is on par with Windows. It's pretty good. There are a few titles that are rare exceptions where Linux performs better than Windows. A lot of the time that's either because the DRM is missing and broken or because Linux will have none of the DRM doing really weird things and it sandboxes it pretty well. Not that it makes the DRM ineffective, I don't, I don't think that's true. It just the operating system scheduler and some low level primitives handle that a lot better. Now, if you're into doing things in Linux for VFIO and pass through, know that I've been struggling with RDNA 3 and pass through. It is possible to get the cards to reset in some scenarios, but mostly it's a non-starter for the uninitiated. And I'm not really nailed down what the issue is. I'm not sure it's a, if it's a platform issue or a PCIe issue or a PCIe 5 issue or something that we can be, you know, we can overcome if we use CPU lanes, for example, rather than chipset lanes. For now, 6000 series GPUs, if you're gonna use a VFIO build are probably a safer option. And yes, this card is cheaper than a 6600 and performs better than a 6600, kind of a lot cheaper than a 6600. And it would be a better buy than a 6600 were it not for the reset issue for VFIO type scenarios. So unless you plan to run this for a Windows virtual machine, uh, I don't think you're gonna have any problems. I think you're gonna be delighted with the Linux experience. It is almost out of the box. So for Pop! OS, I just did a, a base install. Now if you're gonna install Ubuntu 23.04, that's gonna work with nothing special. 22.04 on Pop! OS 
doesn't quite have a new enough kernel to work with RDNA 3. And so it can hang because it says, oh, this is AMD GPU, I understand this, but it doesn't really understand it. So you'll get a big black nothing, or you'll get some text on the screen that says, hey, we're gonna switch from frame buffer mode to AMD GPU, and that's all it does. All you gotta do is set no mode set. That'll install in a kind of graphics compatibility mode. And that's if you wanna install Pop OS as opposed to Ubuntu or something like that. Once you do that, all you gotta do is run the updates or let it run the updates for the operating system and then you let it reboot and then you don't have to set no mode set anymore. If you're doing a fresh install, you'll have to set no mode set twice, once for the installer and then on the first reboot, because you're missing the updates probably, then you, you do it there. So no mode set once for the installer and then no mode set once again on the reboot to let it get the updates because you'll get the updates and everything will be like 1024 by 768 and you can't change the resolution. And then you just run the updates and then that's all you gotta do. Install Steam, get signed in, start downloading and playing games. It is really incredible to me that that is the gaming experience on Linux these days. You, you could do all that through the GUI. You don't have to touch the terminal at all. That's how far we've come with Linux gaming. And you can play a lot of Windows games under Linux via Steam's you know, Proton layer, which is pretty exciting. So overall, for less than $300, this seems like a win for gamers and enthusiasts. And this perfectly reasonable, not you know, multi-thousand dollar system here, based around the new modern AM5 platform with DDR5 running at 6,000. But yeah, this is a, a breathtakingly fast system. In case you're wondering about noise and thermals on our Sapphire RX 7600, well, the 7600 is a, about 25 to 35 more watts than the 6600. So it's gonna run a little warmer. And even at full load, the fans are basically inaudible in this case with the sides on. Now I'm cheating a little bit. This is the Define case. It's designed for soundproofing. Not being able to hear it even when the fans are moving at 1700, 1800 RPM is kind of a function of the case. If you had a more open air case, you may be able to hear it depending on where the computer is in relation to where you're sitting. But Sapphire is pretty good with these kinds of things and it's definitely better than the reference design in that respect. You had a lot of options for really fun Linux support, homogenous 16 core CPUs and fun little builds like this. I'm trying to get back into the groove of things. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out you can find me in the level one forums.